In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Daikin DZ9 and the Train XV20i. These are two 20 or 2 Plus HVAC systems on the market right now. We're going to go through the different efficiency ratings. We're going to go through the COP data, which if you don't know what that is, don't worry. We'll explain that in a second. We're also going to talk about tax credit eligibility and which of these systems qualify in both the North and the South. And we'll explain just the general differences between these systems and how they actually perform. Before we get started, if you haven't done so already, Ready, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content valuable, subscribing to the channel is a free way you can show your support and it is much appreciated. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Right now I have both the Daikin DZ9 VC and the XV20i pulled up on my screen and we'll do a head-to-head -head matchup between these two systems so you can see you know how they stack up and how they compare to each other. Now, now, if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and you just started your search for, you know, HVAC system replacement, you're in the market for a heat pump, there's a lot of models out there, there's a lot of information, it makes it very difficult to navigate. What we're going to talk about is how to go about getting the best heat pump for your specific climate, because the truth is, is not all heat pumps keep up in cold weather, not all heat pumps keep up in really hot weather, and certain heat pumps just perform better in certain climates. And when it comes to tax credit eligibility, I'll make sure to link this Energy Star site in the description for you below, so you have it, but basically on the Energy Star our site, there's a, a page dedicated to the heat pump tax credit that is going on now through 2032 that explains how it actually works and what qualifies in what region. So you have these northern blue states, which are going to have heat pumps that are more geared towards cold climate performance. And then these southern states are more geared towards heating performance, right? Because in Colorado, our summers are not quite, although they can be very hot, uh, they're not quite as hot as what you might experience in Phoenix, Arizona, for example. And so you're going to want a system that keeps up well in your specific climate. And as a result, different systems actually qualify based on different specifications and requirements. And so when we jump into this tax credit eligibility, we'll explain what does and does not qualify in what specific regions. But just to dive in, let's get started with the DZ9VC. Now, this is Daikin's inverter system. It's their top of the line system. It's up to 22.5 SEER2. What that means, SEER2 is an acronym for Seasonal Energy Efficiency ratio. And that stands for how well a system performs in air conditioning mode in those peak season months, right? And 22.5 just means this is a very efficient system. Uh, the minimum that they're manufacturing now are all between 13 and 14 SEER2. So this is a higher end system. And then 8.2 on the HSPF2 rating means that this system is relatively efficient when it comes to heating. That stands for heating seasonal performance factor. And however, this system does not qualify for the heat pump tax credits in cold climates. And I'll explain why in a second when we do a deep dive into some of the data. Now, the XV20i variable speed heat pump advertises that it does qualify in cold climates, but there's actually only one tonnage and model matchup that qualifies, and that's the three ton version with a very specific matchup. So depending on what system you pair this with, it may or may not qualify for that cold climate heat pump because there's literally only one matchup where it works. Now, if we look at the SEER data, we can see this is up to 20.5 on the SEER2 efficiency ratings. The HSPF2 rating is a little bit higher at 8.7. And then the decibel rating is between 54 and 76 decibels in terms of noise level. Now, both these systems have a variable speed fan. Both of them are Energy Star qualified. And then this energy savings, you know, statistic that Train puts on their website, this is compared to like an 8 or a 10 SEER single stage system. So 50% savings is going to be if you're replacing let's say a 20 year old plus system that's very inefficient then this would definitely you would see a big savings on your bill and the way that these systems work differently compared to a single stage system is that they ramp up and down along a continuum instead of being in a single stage of operation so a single stage five ton heat pump can only run at 100 percent capacity and five tons of cooling or five tons of heating. Now, the downside with that, as you can imagine, is that it just, sometimes your system doesn't need that full 100% capacity. Well, an inverter allows this system to ramp up and down along a continuum. So it can kick on at 10% capacity when it first starts up and then ramp up 
to 50% capacity, for example, if that's all that's needed to satisfy temperature in the home, and then it ramps down slowly. And so what you'll see is you'll get longer run times with these systems, but at a much lower capacity. And so therefore using less energy to heat and cool your home because they're not overdoing it, so to speak, and coming on at 100% capacity just to keep up. So now some of the differences between these systems we can talk about really quick is warranty. You know, common question we get asked. So the uh, Daikin system qualifies for a 12 year parts warranty as well as a 12 year unit replacement warranty. What does that mean? right? Well, that means all the parts are under warranty for 12 years. But in addition, Daikin gives a 12 year unit guarantee on the compressor. So if that compressor goes bad in the first 12 years, they'll actually give you a brand new unit, not just a new compressor. And so it, it's just a nice feature to have. That's one thing I really like about Daikin is that is one of the industry best warranties. Now, when we look at the warranty for the XV20i, now, as far as the warranty on this XV20i system, if we go in and we look, we can see that the warranty is going to be 12 years. And this is a with registration. The same is true for Daikin. Most manufacturers will incentivize you and the contractor to register the equipment timely, which is typically within 60 or 90 days. In this particular system, it's 60 days, uh, but they give you a 12 year compressor warranty. Again, that's on the compressor itself. And then they do 10 year on the rest of the parts, including the coil. So the nice thing about that is that everything will be under warranty, you know, for that period. It's not quite as good as the Daikin warranty, but it's a, a great system. They're very close in terms of their energy efficiency ratings. Now I'm going to do a deep dive into the Daikin system performs and go into COP data. So you have that information. Unfortunately, train does not have manuals with their specifications available online. At least I couldn't find any. If you can find them, please let me know. I'm happy to go over that and do a video. I'm not trying to be unfair to train. I'm just trying to find the manuals for their equipment with the performance specifications, because when I'm doing Doing a deep dive, I really like to go into how the systems actually perform at different temperatures. So we're not just pontificating and guessing about, you know, how things are going to keep up. We can actually look at the data that's provided. So I'm going to do it with the Daikin system so you can see because it's going to give context for some of the tax credits that we're going to talk about shortly. So looking at this heating data, right? If you're looking for a heat pump primarily for heating, what you're going to be concerned with is low ambient performance, meaning how does the system keep up at five degrees Fahrenheit? The reason you care about how the system keeps up at five degrees Fahrenheit is that in order for a system to be qualified for that tax credit in cold climates, it has to maintain capacity of at least 70% what it puts out at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to maintain that capacity to 70% at five degrees Fahrenheit. So the reason this Daikin system does not qualify is as you can see, or at least it doesn't qualify in cold climates, it will qualify in these Southern states is because at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, it has a BTU output of 23,000 BTUs. It has a COP of 3.5, which I'll explain in a moment. But at five degrees Fahrenheit, this drops to 13,000 BTUs to use of heating capacity, which means that the system loses almost half its capacity at these lower ambient temps. Now, if you look at COP here, it says COP is 2.2. COP of 2.2 means that this system, it qualifies for that cold climate requirement based on COP, but because the capacity loss is too high, it do, that's why it doesn't hit the tax credit because it has to maintain a COP of at least 1.75 at five degrees Fahrenheit, which the system does, but it also has to maintain 70% of its capacity, which would be somewhere around 16 or 17,000 BTUs in this case for this particular system. So this system isn't going to work well as a cold climate heat pump because of how much capacity loss it has at those lower ambient temperatures. However, in high ambient ambient conditions. One of the things about this system that make it very appealing in a climate like Phoenix, for example, is if you look at its high ambient performance, this system, you might not have known that your system actually loses capacity when it gets above 100 or 110 or, you know, 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you live in, you know, Palm Springs or the desert or Las Vegas or Phoenix, Arizona, I mean, regularly in the summer, we get lots of days where it hits over 110 and over 115. And on those days, your system is actually running at reduced capacity. Well, the reason this qualifies 
part of why this qualifies for the tax credit and energy star rating in those southern states is that at 115 degrees you can see this five ton system only derates by about 6,000 BTUs compared to where it's at around 95 degrees where it's at 53,000 BTUs in terms of output so that 48,000 BTUs means your five ton system is now a four ton system in the peak of the day at that hottest temperature and then as it cools down overnight uh, the capacity starts to come back this is accounted for in your system design believe it or not like when your contractor is putting this in they know this about these systems and that's why picking out the right system in your specific region is so important and that's what these tax credits are based on so if you go in here I'm gonna make sure to link again this energy star website in the description so you have it for your reference but if you look at the energy star data for the XV 20 I you can see this is designated as a cold climate heat pump however there's a caveat that I want to go through because it's not all systems unfortunately the Daikin DZ9 does not but as you can see you know it has that EER rating of 12 HSPF2 rating of 8.2 and a SEER2 rating you know is going to vary between 19 and 21 based on the tonnages and so the different systems are going to keep up but if you look at the this tax credit eligibility if you click on this link where it says tax credit eligible on any of these products it will take you to this page right here where you can then click on explore models and find eligible products this is only if you're curious obviously your contractor should be doing this they you don't have to navigate this and most contractors are familiar with this only based on what their you know manufacturers tell them so like we work with our product reps and they kind of let us know what does and doesn't qualify but as you can see right now when I search for the XV 20 I'm on the train system it's only tax credit eligible in the north for one size and that is for the three ton system paired with this specific indoor model number and this specific furnace system and so it's not all of them so you just want to keep that in mind that it's not unfortunately they make it a little bit more complicated because in order for a system to qualify it qualifies based on a specific matchup between an indoor unit and an outdoor unit because if you put in a low efficiency indoor unit that can actually reduce the whole rating in terms of energy efficiency performance for the whole system so that's where they get their ratings from is a combination of the indoor unit paired with the outdoor unit that's just something to consider so because the only difference between the Daikin DZ9 and the train is that one system quality qualifies but if you look at the Daikin system and sometimes the system is tricky and doesn't pull up right away unless you type it in perfectly you can see none of the DZ9 systems are qualify in the north but they all qualify in the south so if you want a three ton system a four ton system a two ton system you'll be able to get a matchup that qualifies however there is not a five ton system that qualifies in the south as well and so that's just something to consider and that's also something where train kind of has the Daikin system beat in that it does have the five ton system does qualify for that tax credit because if we go back here and we take a look at that so as you can see train does have a five ton condenser matchups available that will qualify for that tax credit so that's just some food for thought you know on how that tax credit works I'll make sure to like I said link this in the description for you below but in summary both these systems are basically neck and neck in terms of their tax credit eligibility their high ambient performance their uh, cold climate performance as well I can't really do a head-to-head -head matchup because I have the data for Daikin but I don't have that for train but if I'm able to get my hands on the train I will do a revisit of this video to give you a closer matchup but the bottom line is that if you're looking for a top of the line heat pump system especially in those southern states either of these systems would probably be a good solution for you you're going to have very efficient heating for those short winter months in the southern states and then you're also going to have very efficient cooling capacity that's going to keep up in the heat of the summer both of these systems are going to be very quiet and very efficient and again if you have questions on whether or not these systems would work in your specific market feel free to post a comment in the comment section below and let us know what projects you're working on or what you're considering for your home because we do read to and respond to the comments just keep in mind at the time of the filming of this video we are going into the thick of the busy season so if it's middle of summer and we're not responding to comments as quickly as usual we're just busy working so we hope you enjoyed this content and found it helpful and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already 
Again, please consider subscribing. It's a free way you can show support and smash that like button for the algorithm. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google, as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas. I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or in-floor radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors. So click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC dope show contractor in your area. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen about heat pump efficiency ratings, as well as some videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.